So Mark, what have you got today? This is a demonstration of something called Barkhausen noise, B-A-R-K-H-A-U-S-E-N, noise, which you can look up on, uh, on Google. Um, it was first discovered uh, just before the First World War, and it's a beautiful example of, or a beautiful piece of evidence, for domain theory. Domain theory being the idea that any ferromagnetic material is made up of lots and lots of uh, individual crystals, which themselves behave like little magnets, and when that piece of iron, uh, or steel, or whatever it is, is unmagnetized, the domains are all jumbled up, pointing it with their dipoles pointing in random directions. Mm -hmm. And when you bring a magnet near to them, it becomes magnetized. And what's happened now is that all of the domains have now lined up, thus making it temporarily into a magnet. So what I've got here is a piece of steel. Uh, a little bit of trial and error is needed to find a piece of steel that works really well. Uh, just mounted in a cork, nice and easily. In fact, I can take that out so you can see how straightforward it is. And so is the cork just to hold it in the centre? The cork's just to hold it nicely in the centre, otherwise it tends to fly around a little bit. Yeah. Um, so just get the sizing nicely. Uh, in this case, this is a 1200 turn coil. Uh, you might have some of these lying around for transformer kit. Uh, it doesn't really matter what it is. I usually find that um, uh, a good thousand turns or more um, is good. And then this is just uh, the output that happens to be on this coil just going into a, uh, a loudspeaker and amplifier unit. And you can use almost anything. I've used audio amplifiers in the past. Um, it usually works quite well. Now what happens is this alignment process where the domains go from being jumbled up to being all nicely orientated, it's very rarely described in textbooks, but it, you might be led to believe that it happens nice and smoothly that the domains go from being jumbled to being organized in a nice, smooth, orderly process, and they don't. If you know stuff about uh, crystal structure and things like impurities and grain boundaries and that sort of thing, it might not be too surprising that actually what happens is, let's say you've got two domains like this with their dipoles pointing in different directions, if this one is trying to turn that way, then it, they will often get, the dipoles will often get stuck. So it will try and move, try and move, try and move, and then eventually it will move. And because the eventual movement is sudden, and sharp, and that's happening billions of times over and over again, thousands of times over and over again, within there, you actually get a whole series of little flicks of domains. Now, every time a domain flicks into position, it makes this slightly more magnetic, it changes the magnetic field here, which, of course, by Faraday's law, induces a small EMF in the coil. A small EMF in the coil will then make a small current there, and, of course, will then get a little bit of noise out of the loudspeaker. So we can actually hear the metal inside sort of changing over, or so the effect you, of it. So you can hear each of these individual little domains moving. Now, it's not a crackling noise, because there's thousands of them, it's more like a whooshing noise. So just listen carefully. And as I pull it away, not much happens in this case as you pull it away, but that's because it's, it's, it retains some of its magnetism. So if I turn the magnet around and bring it in again, this is a very strong magnet, by the way. So move it away. There we go. And just to prove that this is definitely a magnetic effect, I've also got a piece of copper wire, also mounted in a cork. So if I put that in there, if what I've been telling you is right, absolutely nothing should happen. The magnet either way around. No, nope, absolutely nothing happens. So it's definitely magnetic effect. They're so nice. I'm going to do it one more time. It's not often you can say that you're hearing atoms move almost individually. Isn't that nice? One nice thing once you've started playing with this is that if you, um, this is nothing to do with barcasm noise by the way, but it's a nice little extra, is that if you hold the magnet close to it and tap the magnet with your finger, you can hear small amounts of noise coming out of the loudspeaker. That's because you've just got a magnetic field moving within a coil of wire, so it's uh, responding to it. What you've actually designed there is a very, very simple microphone. It's just responding to vibrations. Here's a piece of iron. I wonder if this will work better. Yeah, that works loads better, doesn't it? And so you've made a microphone out of a magnet, a coil, coil of, of wire, wire, and a piece of iron. It's not a very good microphone, it wouldn't exactly respond to my voice, I've got to tap it quite hard to get anything out, but in principle that is a microphone. But it shows the idea. It shows it. Thank you.